Hello everybody, this is Axter99 with another first impressions look at a new asymmetrical horror game that just launched a few days ago. This is a multiplayer game that pits four survivors against one killer, one all-powerful demon as you see here. And the players can kind of scrounge around for guns and items to protect themselves against the all-powerful demon. But the goal is for the survivors to escape the island either by waiting until daybreak when the sun will kill the demon evidently or by collecting four pieces of a skeleton uh four pieces of a ritual to bring back to the altar which will kill uh the demon as well so there's really no way to kill the demon except making it to daybreak or by getting the four pieces of a skeleton and bringing them back to the altar and the survivors can either choose to work together or work alone and uh, I believe you can even kill each other. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at both the survivor aspect and playing a killer in Demonicle or Demonicle, where trust is optional, death is not. A game by developer Fearum. And I wanna go ahead and thank the developer or the publisher, whoever it was that offered me a free evaluation copy of this game so I could make this video for you guys today. We'll be back right after this. All right, welcome back everybody. We just launched the game and if we go to settings here, check that out. We see we have a lot of different resolutions to choose from here, windowed on or off. Uh, we have a field of view here, which you can set, which I really like that. And all these different effects for bloom and uh, lighting and then environment and ocean reflections for the water and grass and rocks and all kinds of shadows and stuff like that. So a lot of different gra uh, graphics options here in this game. I really like that. And then at different levels for your master sounds, music, and uh, you even have your key bindings here as well. Okay, so pick up is our E button. Everything else looks pretty standard and V is your voice button. And then you can even customize your survivor character. Obviously, your you know if you take control of the demon, you're gonna look like, you know, you don't have a lot of choice there. But here we go, we're choosing a female, just looking at this, and they all look the same. All these have different names, but definitely not a big variety here in what they actually look like. And we have a female here, but I couldn't help but notice, what the hell is that? If I ever noticed a female in real life that had something like that between their legs, um, yeah. I would be a little bit concerned. Uh, I definitely wouldn't be taking them home, I'm just saying. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe you guys can tell me down in the comments below if that would turn you on, on a first date. Anyway, we're back here to the guys, and again, not a lot of difference here in the models, so maybe that'll change at some point. Remember, this game is an early access, so, you know, really early in development, and my guess is that at some point they will have more differences in uh, the model names than what they have right now. Right now, I think I just prefer to use the randomize uh, function right here. I really like the randomize uh, option in these kind of, uh, you know, character customizations for RPGs and all kinds of stuff. I just like being able to hit a random button until I find something I like. Anyway, we see that uh, the credits here show this game was made by one programmer and just a few other people for like the music and such. So we're going to go ahead and just search for a random game. We might be the demon, we might be one of the human survivors. And it's going really quick here for a Saturday morning. It's already, it looks like it's already found four of the five players needed. It's pretty quick. I was expecting this game with just a handful of reviews on Steam to take quite a while to find five online players. It's not filling them in up at the top. You only see my like Steam profile icon, but to the right of searching for players, it shows four of the five dots are already highlighted. I would assume that means it's found four of the five players that needed for a game. Obviously, you can cancel the search at any time. Yep, we just lost one. Now we have three of the five. So I could have taken this out, but I want you guys to kind of know, you know, how long you might expect to wait for 
a game should you buy this game and and check it out well there we go we got our five players and we're just waiting for everybody to, i guess to ready up of course i don't have a ready up button here maybe the other players are just loading or whatever they're still loading into the game or whatever i don't know three of the five are ready to go and i assume i'm ready to go yeah i wouldn't be ready to go if i wasn't on the screen i don't think all right here we go First game is a survivor. Find all the missing ritual parts and bring them back to the altar to win. And this is the altar, obviously. We have another fellow survivor here with a flashlight just like me. And it says you hit your Q button and you can rotate around and try to find where the missing ritual pieces are. So what happens, guys, is in this game, you're going to hit Q and you can move in a circle and it'll kind of show you like which direction you want to go to find a, a missing ritual piece. The slash on your hand will highlight if you're facing, you know, a direction where there is a missing ritual piece. And if you get really close, as it says there, the cut will pulsate. So the pulsating cut on our hand when we look at it means that we're very close to a missing ritual piece that we need to take back to that altar. So it's saying to just keep searching for through the houses. You know, it might not be the first house we search for, but one problem I've already found in just a couple of games I've played as a survivor here is that a lot of times you'll have three or four, uh, all, you know, all the survivors all kind of huddled in the same house, getting in each other's way, looking for that one piece. Um, but the demon, the killer could come up at any point and all he has to do is hit his mouse button to kill us. And we see here that one of the missing ritual pieces has already been found by this survivor. And this was my first game uh, playing this game. So I kind of wanted to see, you know, how this worked. And so I kind of followed her as she ran back. I'm like, well, how do you know where the altar is? I had no idea how she knew where she was going. I was like looking for a mini map or, or what. But really, you don't even need to look for a mini-map or anything like that. All you do is look for those, like, red splatters in the sky. And I think they go kind of way up. And she found the demon here. And the demon knocked the ritual piece out of her hand. She happened to have a gun. She was lucky enough to have a gun and kind of stunned him. But while she's fighting him, I decided to go ahead and pick this thing up again. And you have to hold down your left mouse button to pick it up. And uh, it takes a minute to collect it. And now it says bring the ritual part back to the altar. And uh, as long as you just bring it close to the altar, it automatically puts it on the skeleton and you're free to go. But if the demon gets you, he knocks the thing out of your hand and she's like holding the gun at me. She's like, you took my ritual piece, you bastard. <laughs> no, I don't know what, why she was holding the gun and pointing at me. So I started flashing my flashlight at her here. And I'm like, well... We got evidently one of the four pieces. Let's go ahead and look for the next piece. I'm already headed the right direction. You can tell by the cut on my hand. She's going the same way as well. I like the rain effects in this game. You can hear the thunderstorms. Uh, you can see the clouds. And, it, you know, it definitely does uh, implement your vision a little bit when it gets rainy. I also like the fact that when you're running up a hill, you do run slower than when you're running down a hill. So you can run down a hill or a slope. A lot quicker than you can run up which makes kind of sense you saw I noticed by my hand I was headed in the wrong direction but I simply turned and now I'm getting a pulsating so I'm like okay where is this piece because I'm really close to another piece still pulsating so the game's pretty cool I mean I like the fact that you know it's a little bit different than Deceit it's definitely a lot different than like Dead by Daylight and uh you know, it's still really early access. This game just launched, what, three days ago, something like that. And I decided to go ahead and close the door here. Didn't want the demon coming in, or at least maybe I'd know if the demon came in. That is a stick. I can collect that, and then you could just hold uh, M1 to light it, and you'll have a torch. Now, the torch does burn out after, like, 30 seconds or whatever, but if you have a torch while the uh, demon is around you you can burn the demon with the torch remember you can't kill the demon but at least you can stun him for a moment now here i'm trying to collect this ritual piece and it goes up in the air and it kept falling now, this is the first time i tried to collect a ritual piece from a table 
and I finally figured out that you have to kind of keep your hand on the ritual piece or it will keep falling. I'm like, what the hell? Why, why does it keep falling back to the table? And then I'm like, well, wait a minute, maybe I just need to keep my cursor on the ritual piece. I mean, it's, you know, it just takes a little bit of common sense. Just keep your cursor on the, the bone there and you'll end up collecting it. Yeah, I was a little bit, a little bit confused there uh, initially, like why it kept falling. Like, what is this thing too heavy for me to pick up or what's going on? But now I have it and now I just need to go back and find that altar. And again, you're just looking for the red bubbles kind of in the sky. You also, oh, there they are. So see, they go way up in the sky, so they're really easy to see. You just kind of need to look all around. But you need to watch out for the demon. Notice how I'm going up a hill, so I'm moving really slow. And then sometimes there's a, it's a little bit buggy. Sometimes you're sitting there holding shift while you're going up a slope. And then once you get to the top of the slope, it'll continue to move real slow. And you got to kind of let go of the shift button and then repress the shift button to start running faster. I mean, it's not exactly perfect. It's a little bit buggy. Definitely needs some work. But... You know, there's some fun to be had in this game. I think that if you was to play with friends or whatever, you'd probably have a little more fun. And I'm just hoping this demon doesn't come and get me before I get it back to the altar here. And I'm hoping that the other survivors have got some other pieces. But no, we still need to collect, it looks like, two more pieces. We still need to get the other leg and the other arm. So, I've actually attached both ritual pieces to the altar so far. Okay, so I think this guy here has another piece. Yep, I think he just went and put on the third piece. Yes, so we just need one more. So, okay, it looks like I was going the right direction, but I hear, I hear um, what sounds like the demon. Yeah, she's shooting it. I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, you can see him kind of flying in the sky. I don't know if he's running from her gun or what, or if he's just being nice. I kind of feel like the... The demon player was just not really trying that hard, or maybe he's really new, I'm not sure. But I mean, this is the first game I played, and uh, yeah, I didn't have a whole lot of trouble figuring out what to do. Or My biggest problem was, again, trying to figure out that I held it, had to hold the cursor on the uh, ritual as it floated up into the sky to actually collect it. So I think, you know, it's not real tough, just hold your cursor on it and you'll collect it. So here again, I'm just looking at my hand, keep looking at my hand, making sure I'm going the right direction. I know I'm going the right direction, so I just keep looking at my hand to see if it's starting to pulsate. I really like the rain effects here. Now it's starting to pulsate here. So I'm like, okay, it's probably in here somewhere. And go upstairs here. Hmm, could the ritual piece be in like a drawer or something? I find a gun, cool. So we got a weapon. But you can search all these different cabinets and drawers and stuff like that. But I kind of feel like that's mostly for like weapons and art and bullets and stuff. I'm not real sure you see this other guy searching as well. I'm sure he's looking at his hand and going, okay, the ritual piece is around here somewhere. But I'm not finding it. And honestly, what I think happened here is I think the ritual piece was in this room. And I believe another survivor had found it just before I came up here. And I believe he's already en route back to the altar. So there's really no uh, ritual piece here. I believe another uh, player has already collected it. As you can see, I look at my hand again and it's, uh, it's not even pulsating. So that tells me that, and if I went all the way around in a circle here, it's in no direction. So that kind of tells me that somebody else has the last piece. There are no other pieces because we already had three of the four. So somebody else has it. And they have it right there. I just noticed she had the piece, but I can't get any kind of signal, you know, which direction she's at or anything like that. If somebody else is carrying uh, the last ritual piece, then you won't even get any kind of indication. So I lost where she went. And I was like, wait a minute. She probably went maybe up this way. I was a little bit confused here playing the game as to what was going on. I think I was just trying to figure out, you know, if my hand would ever highlight. But at that point, she already had the piece back at the uh, altar, and all four parts were collected, and all yay. four of us won. And we got a yay from one of the survivors. And there you go. So let's go ahead now and take a look at me trying to play the demon. So here we are trying to play the killer or the demon role. And you see, to do that, I've selected the preference as a demon there. 
and uh, it took a while for me to get uh, for it to actually find five players when I was pickier and I decided you know I wanted to play the demon I wouldn't play either so I selected preference as a demon it took like probably five or ten minutes I don't know if it was because less people were playing or because I wanted to play the killer but uh, it did take a little bit longer than the survivor game so now everybody's been found we're just waiting for the players again and it has a timer there at the top and like I say I could have cut all this out but I want to kind of show you guys my experience with the game so you guys will know what to expect if you go you know fork out money for this game and buy it uh, you guys will kind of have a heads up of what you might expect and how long you might have to wait should you buy the game right now in early access uh, right after it released now they say that there are a lot of different things coming to the game like I guess they're going to add some skills kind of like maybe perks or something like that in Dead by Daylight. Some kind of skills anyway are going to be added. I assume that means for maybe both the killer and the survivors. And uh, they're also going to add like experience. So I guess you can level up. Uh, I don't know. I haven't read, really read a whole lot about it or I don't know how, how deep that's going to be. But what it tells me is the game's really early and they're going to be adding quite a bit to it. So I was supposed to be a demon and I log in and I'm like, what the heck, why am I a survivor? I'm like, all right, well, I guess somebody else is the demon. A demon is chosen once the night falls, and no one will know who it is. Okay, so I just noticed that uh, going back and doing commentary over my gameplay video right now. And uh, so everybody's a survivor right now. No demon has been chosen. But it's going to choose a demon here. So I'm, I'm at this point when I'm playing, I thought I didn't read that. I didn't see that. So I was just already looking for a ritual piece and I, I thought that somebody else was playing a demon. And I'm like, well, this guy hasn't loaded in or is he just looking at the sky or... I don't know what's going on with that guy. So I'm already playing the survivor role. I had no idea that, you know, I was like, what the hell, this game's a little bit buggy. I selected, I wanted to be a demon and I'm survivor. I really wanted to play the demon for this video. I knew I wanted to make a video. And I couldn't collect this. I don't even know what it is. It looks like a healing kit or something like that, but it wouldn't let me collect it. Uh, I couldn't get any closer to it. And then I was able to collect this, uh, this belt, but I couldn't collect this little box. I don't know what that is, but... So anyway, I come back out. I'm like, okay, she's checking him out as well. Oh, well, he's not looking up in the sky anymore. Okay. Well, there are branches on the forest floor. You can light them on fire, and fire cripples the demon. So I'm like, okay, my hand's pulsating. There's got to be a ritual piece in here somewhere. Where is it? Aha, it's right here on the bed. So now from the first game, I kind of learned that I have to keep my cursor on that piece of the bone. And it worked that time, first time. I never dropped it. All right, get out of my way, woman. I'm trying to get this back to the altar since we have another killer after us, right? And I see the altar over here. I'm going to go ahead and get this back. And now I suddenly change into the demon. So I guess I was a survivor and I just dropped the demon. Uh, I actually helped them out by bringing it halfway to the altar. And now I take the demon roll. This is the first time I play the demon. And, uh... Here I am, I just press the M1 button, guys, and I attack him and, like, eat his soul or something like that. I killed him, I guess. And it tells you, you eliminate whatever the player name is. And here, I, all again, it was like an M1, and I almost automatically attacked her. I wasn't even facing her, and I just, she was nearby, so I automatically attacked her. Auto-aim, if you would. So super easy to kill the players as a demon. And it looks like you move a little bit quicker. But you don't have any ability, at least that I, uh, I was trying all the different buttons. I didn't see any kind of way to like, you know, move really, really fast or teleport or anything like that. Uh, so from what I, what I can tell, you just kind of move around like this. You can hit your alt key and then you have a lot better vision. And then you can also see survivors from a long ways away as well. Right here, I was really trying to figure out how I could tell where the last guy was. Uh, but I couldn't really see him even with my my special vision here 
and I'm sitting here trying to spam all the different buttons. I don't see anything telling me that I can, you know, teleport or anything like that. But you can see the difference in my vision, whether I go regular vision or whether I turn the uh, special vision on. Definitely can see better by hitting the Alt key. One thing I notice is I can't go through uh, closed doors. So if you're a survivor playing the game and you go in a building, you don't want to leave the doors open. If you go into a building, close the doors because it doesn't look like the demon can get inside as long as you close the doors behind you. And like I said, I only played a couple of games of this once as a survivor and this game here uh, playing as the demon. Boy, I'm one ugly SOB for sure. And I'm still trying to figure out how I know where the survivors are, but I think I see it. That little ball of light over there, I believe that is the, you know, a, a survivor. So it's kind of showing me where he's at. He's still quite a ways away, it looks like. And I believe that is what they look like when you're really far away from them. Getting another look at myself. This game's a little bit different in the fact that survivors, you have a first person perspective and then the killer has a third person perspective that's uh, completely opposite of a game like a Dead by Daylight but again don't be thinking this is a game like Dead by Daylight it's not a game like Dead by Daylight at all if anything it's a game much more like Deceit than it is like Dead by Daylight so I found the other survivor I saw his I saw him right there and again you just get close to him and then just hit your M1 button and you notice how I was facing away from him but I hit my M1 button and attacked him and killed him. The confusing thing here is it says I won the game, but it says humans are dead won. We just watched me kill three people. Anyway, each game looks to be pretty short, you know, five to 10 minutes, maybe 15 tops, and that's pretty much it. But hopefully this video has given you guys a good idea of what you can expect if you buy the monocle on Steam, and uh, you know, this is kind of what you're gonna get. So thanks so much for watching. Be sure you comment down below. Be sure you rate my video. This has been Zax29. Take care, everybody.